Switch 2 pre-orders being canceled. Are you one of the people that that's happened to? I have. We'll talk about that on the show today. It's been a total mess. I've got a retro-inspired indie game that you need to see. It's 35 years in the making. I've had a chance to finally dive into this one. And I've been testing out Steam OS on some handhelds, particularly the Asus ROG Ally. And it's been a bit of a roller coaster, a little bit of a, a bumpy ride, as they say. So let's dive in. Welcome, everyone, to the channel. If you're new here, you know, I'm just a 48-year-old dad of three who uh, works full-time and loves to talk about retro video games, loves to talk about video games and video game news. So if you're into that sort of thing, thanks for subscribing to the channel and thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes during your day. So let's start with the Switch 2 today. I can't believe it's been eight years since the original Switch launched. My daughter was just born. I can't believe it. Now she's running around. She's almost nine years old. That's crazy town to me. So... The Switch has been in my life, in my family's life for a long time. And yes, the Switch 2 finally here this week, officially launching this Thursday, June 5th. A lot of people excited about it. A lot of people pissed off about it. And the pre-order situation has been, well, uh, let's be honest, it's been kind of a disaster. Now, my Walmart pre-order just canceled. Many of you have had that same experience. Best Buy, Walmart pre-orders, suddenly just gone. No reason at all, just boom, gone. Your pre-order has been canceled. Luckily, I did have a backup pre-order ready to go with Target, and my credit card has been charged. So fingers crossed, I'm actually good on that front, and Target will hopefully be delivering my Switch 2 this week. But I am hearing from a lot of you that this has been happening, especially with Walmart. And the issue seems to be fraudulent credit card transactions. So big pre-order charges get flagged by your credit card company. You know, maybe a month and a half ago, you put in your pre-order, whatever it was. Was it a month and a half ago? And everything was fine. They didn't charge your card until just this week. And then suddenly that transaction gets canceled because your credit card company thinks that this is fraudulent. Some folks, though, didn't even get an email about it, letting them know. I got a, a like a notification from the Walmart application on my phone. That's how I found out about it. But then I went into my orders history. It, it's not even there. It's really bizarre. Many of you have had this experience. And so, yeah, it has to do with your credit card. Now, to their credit, Walmart is offering a $10 gift card to make up for it. But that's not much of a consolation if you were banking on launch day, you were excited about it, maybe you were ordering it as a present for someone. So bottom line, check your status of your pre-order. Again, I didn't even receive any kind of notification that they were going to give me $10. But honestly, this isn't even Walmart's fault or Best Buy's fault. This is the credit card company's fault, right? They're just flagging these and canceling these transactions. Um, so just make sure you check your status of your order, make sure everything is fine. According to Wario64, just a short time ago, they published this last night that shows that they are issuing, uh, reissuing, or putting these items back in your cart once again. So if you had one of these items removed from your cart that cancel, the canceled your transaction, Walmart is going back in and now adding it back into your cart uh, within 24 hours. So make sure you log in to see if that's the case, if your pre-order has been uh, put back into your cart. I have to say, you know, I was kind of bummed out on the Switch 2 with the key card issue and all of that. But because I have a video coming out that I want to talk about how it relates to the Switch 1 and how in many ways I think this has made the Switch 1 even more powerful of a console in a way because of all of those games on the cartridge physically. So for a lot of collectors who may even want to continue collecting for the Switch 1, this is going to open up a whole new world for them because now you've got backwards compatibility on the Switch 2 and you'll be able to play those old cartridges and some of them, of course, getting free upgrades. So in many ways, I feel like the Switch 2, eh, it's fine. But in many ways, it's almost making the Switch 1 a more valuable console. And maybe I'm going to continue to actually buy games on the Switch 1 in order to play them on the Switch 2, because at least I'll have the full game on the cartridge. Isn't that crazy? I can't think of another generation where I've wanted to do that in that way, where I want to use the new console but really continue to buy the old games. I mean, maybe I guess you get the free upgrades on the PS4 to the PS5. So yeah, let me know down below how you feel about that. And did you have one of your pre-orders canceled? So hopefully I'll have that and I'll be able to show it here on the show and talk about it. Next up, I want to talk about a retro indie inspired game. Now, this idea came from a viewer the other day. A viewer said, hey, Clayton, you know, indie devs need all the help they can get. You've got a 
a fairly large channel. Maybe you could highlight some kind of classic retro inspired indie games that maybe we might not even know about and you kind of get the message out there for some of these indie developers and help them a little bit. And I said, I love that idea. We don't necessarily have to just focus on AAA games around here. So let's switch gears now and talk about a new indie game that dropped back in March. I had this on my radar. I didn't get a chance to play it until recently. It's called Beyond the Ice Palace 2. This thing is, I'm going to tell you what, this is like pure nostalgia. This is retro gold. Just look at this beautiful pixel art. And what's wild about this game is that it's a sequel that's been 35 years in the making. Yes, the original Beyond the Ice Palace launched in 1988. My friend had it on the Commodore 64. You could play it on the Amiga. Here's take a look at some Amiga footage here. This is Amiga footage of the original game back then. It was kind of a cult classic back then. But 35 years later in 2025, we're finally getting a full blown follow up built from the ground up but has this beautiful 8-bit classic look to it. Yeah, this is just pure gold. And I have to say, I'm really enjoying playing a lot of these action platformers on the Switch. I just love that. I love that screen in my hand and being able to see that pixel art up close. Yeah, it's fine to play it on a big TV, but I don't really want to. I, I, like, in, I like playing these, these pixel art games in my hand. You know, I played Animal Well on the PS5, and I played that, and I beat that game. I played that on my big screen. And I think that was great because you could see maybe more of the map a little bit, you know. But I honestly, I love the handheld. I, th I wish I would have played Animal Well in handheld mode because to me, it's just such an intimate experience to play these action platformers where you know where you're jumping on this little screen in your hand. There's just something so intimate and, and, and lovely about it. I don't know. I can't, it's hard for me to explain. It's hard for me to put into words. But I have to say, this isn't just some nostalgia cash in game it plays great super tight controls it's got this beautiful chunky pixel art it's got a really nice soundtrack to it seriously it feels like you just like dusted off an unreleased nes game for the first time it reminds me of a blend between like castlevania ghost and the goblin ghost and goblins maybe a little shovel knight thrown in here just a really solid side scrolling action game and guess what there's a physical i got it on the switch I got it on the Nintendo Switch in physical format. So I will put a link down below if you guys want to check that out um, to grab the physical copy of this game. So again, and then play it on your Switch 2 if you want. This is the beauty of this, you know, the Switch 1 game. So anyway, there's my little retro highlight. Let me know down below if you enjoyed that. I want to do more of these in these videos. So just let me know if you like that. If you don't, tell me about it, okay? But if you did like it, great. And we'll do more of them because I love finding these like little hidden gems of games um, to be able to play. And I want to give these guys some love because these indie developers don't have a big marketing budget. Um, you're not going to see like, you know, Beyond Ice Palace 2 on a bus. Like you're going to see Avowed, you know, driving through like Times Square. So they're just keeping classic games alive. And I love that. They deserve a spotlight. By the way, if you've got more indie gems like this one, just drop them in the comments. I'd love to feature them uh, more on the show. So let me know if you have a suggestion and I'll feature it here on the show. All right, we got to talk about this. SteamOS officially rolled out last week for multiple handhelds, the wide open release, okay, uh, for not just the Steam Deck by Valve, but now rolling it out on all sorts of other handhelds like the Asus ROG Ally. And it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, in my opinion. Now, for some folks, installation has been smooth. Just flash a USB stick, install SteamOS, boot it up, and you're good to go. But for me, and for quite a few people, the experience has been pretty buggy. So let me just show you my experience here with the Asus ROG Alley in a second. But first, I will say that I had a hell of a time flashing SteamOS onto a larger sized uh, flash drive. So make sure uh, my experience was a 256 gigabyte SanDisk flash drive. Um, trying it on Belina Etcher on the Mac, trying it on Rufus, actually flashing it using Rufus on Windows, psh, just would not work. I tried a couple hours. <laughs> okay, I tried it for a couple hours. Thought maybe the, you know, SteamOS, um, uh, SteamOS download was corrupted, so re-downloaded that, tried it on multiple machines. Nope, nope, nope. So the flash drive. So I ordered a different flash drive. I picked up, um, uh, here's actually the one I ended up getting. Well, and I'll put a link in the description below. This one actually worked great. This was a little uh, Samsung 
This was a 128 gigabyte one. It was delivered the next day on Amazon. This worked great. This was no problem, flashed immediately on Rufus, uh, using the Rufus tool on Windows. I was able to then put it right through the process on the Asus ROG Ally, installed easily, up to date, boom, done, no problems at all, and was able to relaunch and golden. I thought, here we go. There was a few updates, ran those, everything was good. And then that's when the problem started. Uh, then the controller support died off. The D-pad just stopped responding randomly. You can see here, this is my experience. You'll see that the on-screen controls will work just fine. I'm able to tap back, move forward in the menu options, go through the different games. But as far as controller support, you can see the D-pad, analog sticks, not working. Some of the menu options will work. The Steam menu can open by pressing uh, by pressing the menu here. That, that works fine sometimes, but sometimes not. So I rebooted it. Once I started rebooting it, then it was fine. Then it would work fine. Now, this is to be expected, right? Valve didn't design SteamOS for these devices, and I'm sure the community is still figuring out. Valve is still figuring it out, some of the bugs in all of this. But I will say, if you're thinking about installing it, and you know, you're, you're totally blowing Windows out, so I, I got rid of Windows completely, of course, on this device. So now it's just a SteamOS. It's, now it's basically a Steam Deck. That's what it is. So you have to know what you're getting into. It's not quite sort of set it and forget it. You're going to be troubleshooting some of it. And as you can see here, the controller is set to, in the controller settings, the Asus ROG Ally. So it is set to that. Um, rebooting it seemed to fix it. But then after a few minutes, again, the D-pad stops working. Controls stop working. I'm not alone. A lot of people dealing with this very same issue and a lot of these different quirks. You'll also notice just some other bugs in the menus. You can just see, even with just like the on-screen touch controls here, you can just see the menu just as you're scrolling to the bottom, it bounces back to the top, not allowing you to make any kind of changes as you're, you know, scrolling, boom, snaps right back to the top. So I love the idea of having SteamOS running cleanly on something like the Ally, but right now feels like early access. You're sort of tinkering, fixing stuff not exactly what you want, might have to hold out a bit longer. And as you can see, it's up to date here. So I've got the latest version of SteamOS running on the Asus ROG Ally, the one that they've released for this device. So yeah, still waiting on some bug fixes. So hopefully they will fix controller support. Hopefully they'll fix some of this menu snapping problems, uh, but it looks great. I love the idea of the longer battery life, the faster, better processor, um, better GPU, all of that in the Asus ROG Ally. So let me know, are you having the same experience with your flashing of SteamOS onto one of these handhelds? But I'm excited about it. And I, I we, we talked about this in the live show the other day. I think this sets up Valve to be able to say, why do we need to be in the hardware business? We can make a great OS, we can make a great SteamOS and put it out on all of these different hardware that's available and we don't have to make Steam Decks anymore. <laughs> we don't have to make our own hardware anymore. I know they said there's a Steam Deck 2 in the works. Maybe they'll roll that out and that might be the end of it. And we might just end up having, you know, Asus uh, or MSI or somebody else, you know, uh, making these handhelds and that's what will be the future of SteamOS. So, but I'm excited. I'm excited to be able to play uh, a lot of Steam games, my entire Steam library here on the Asus ROG Ally and have, have that experience. Um, we know, I just hate Windows. I hate Windows. I hate Windows with a passion. So to be able to have that off of this device completely, we're not dual booting, we're just playing, this is a Steam Deck now, where the controls don't work. Let me know if you had that same experience down below. So a quick recap, Switch 2 pre-orders falling apart for a lot of people, especially through Walmart, so check your status right now. Beyond the Ice Palace 2 is a lot of fun. If you love 8-bit games, want to support indie developers, check it out. I'll have links to the physical in the description below. SteamOS on non-Steam Deck handhelds. It's promising, still very much a work in progress. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you've tried SteamOS yourself, let me know how it's been for you. If there's another indie game that you think deserves a highlight here on the show, I'm all ears. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.